contamination risks and will give the best yield available from the formations. Several techniques are used to drill water wells. The most common is the rotary drilling method. Other methods are cable tool, jetting, and driven well points. In rotary drilling, a drill bit is attached to a string of drill pipe. As the drill string is rotated, the bit acts as a grinding machine. Cuttings are flushed upward and out of the hole by circulating a special drilling fluid called drilling mud down through the drill pipe and back to the surface. This drilling fluid also serves to cool and lubricate the drill bit. And by stabilizing the wall of the hole, it can prevent possible cave-in before the casing is fitted into the hole. In areas of hard rocks, many drillers prefer to use a rig that operates by compressed air to operate a downhole air hammer to break up the hard rocks. The compressed air also blows the crushed rock fragments to the surface and any water that flows into the well during drilling. Another drilling technique uses a pounder machine usually referred to as a cable tool drilling rig. With this method, a heavy bit is attached to the end of a wire cable, is raised and dropped repeatedly, pounding its way downward. Periodically, cuttings are baled out of the hole. The method is slow and in most places has been replaced by rotary drilling. The cable tool method is responsible for millions of successful wells around the world. No matter which method of drilling is used, the hole is usually lined with steel or plastic pipe called well casing. The type of casing used is determined by local geological conditions and the chemical quality of the groundwater. In most states, there are recommended well construction standards. Diameter of the drilled hole is usually an inch or two wider than the diameter of the casing. The space between the drilled hole and the casing has to be filled to prevent surface water from migrating downward along the outside of the casing and contaminating the aquifer. This filling is called grout, and it may be either cement or a special clay called bentonite. Sometimes, most of the space is filled with fine rock pieces from drilling, and then the top 20 feet is grouted with cement or bentonite. If the well is drilled into rocks that are crumbly or into sands and gravels, a well screen probably will be needed. The well screen is a sieve or strainer-like cylinder attached to the bottom of the casing. It allows water to flow into the well while preventing fine rock particles or sand from entering. Well screens are not all the same, and the well driller will select the opening size of the screen depending on the size of the rock fragments or sand that make up the aquifer. With the casing and well screen or other intake in place, a flushing or backwashing of the well may be performed to eliminate loose fragments and stabilize the area immediately adjacent to the well intake. This is called developing the well. It's usually installed directly in the well. The electric motor turns impellers in the pump which cause water to be pushed upward out of the well. In some wells, especially in narrow diameter holes where the depth to water is less than 25, follow a drop of water on its journey from the aquifer to the home. Here is the water drop deep underground. It has been moving slowly through the formations for a few years since it first entered the ground as a raindrop. Right now, there is very little movement of groundwater in this aquifer. Now, what happens when the tap is turned on? At first, the water comes from the pressure tank where it is stored, but as more is used, the pressure switch starts the submersible pump. When the pump switches on, our water drop moves from cracks and fissures in the formation, through the well screen, and into the well. Once in the well, the drop is slowly drawn upwards toward the pump. It passes through the pump intake and...
At one mile long and 600 feet high, the Three Gorges Dam on the Yangtze River is a project of epic proportions. The dam, completed in 2008, created a vast upstream reservoir extending 370 miles, about the distance from Los Angeles to San Francisco. With a workforce of over 20,000, the dam is China's largest engineering project since the construction of the Great Wall and has become a symbol of China's re-emergence as a world power. The dam will reduce the frequency of major downstream flooding from once every 10 years to once every 100 years. The dam provides electricity for over 40% of China, generating the equivalent of 18 nuclear power plants. It's a key project for the improvement and development of the river, bringing drinking water to northern China and increasing the river's navigation capacity. There's no place on earth where you can experience a dam and a river on such a scale. And it's here at the Three Gorges Dam. The dam is made with 463,000 tons of steel, enough to build 63 Eiffel Towers. I'm sure the Three Gorges Dam will be a highlight on your trip down the Yangtze, so just bring your cameras and get ready to be impressed on every level.